I just want to talk to you a little bit about papers because often some confusion about what kind of papers you can use uh, and basically what you're wanting is any type of kind of paper but you're wanting something that's fairly smooth. I wouldn't necessarily use a heavy watercolour paper that's very toothy as we call it, it has a tooth, it has lots of dimples to it, it has a texture because your paint is going to go on the surface so it's not going to hit those textures, you're going to get, a, you're going to get an even covering unless that's obviously what you want. Most people tend to go for a smooth paper and that can be as cheap as a smooth copy paper okay from your copy machine or your printer uh, right up to a, a nice smooth artist paper and that's really down to budget uh, and how thick you want your paper to be and there's different needs for different thicknesses okay so I want to kind of unravel that a bit as well. Now paper is sold by the grammage Okay, so uh, 70 grams, right up, I'm using right up to 240 grams. Apologies to those guys who are living a part of the world where you still work in pounds. So that's, I'm sure it's straightforward to convert those. But I think most packets actually have both, me both measurements on them. So let's think about what the, the, that means, okay? Why on earth is it 70 grams and 240 grams? And that's because it's the grams per square meter and it's a measurement of the paper's density. So the higher the number, the thicker the paper. These are the papers that I'm using currently. Okay, I'm often changing around my papers. Uh, and let's start with the thinnest. So this is just copy paper. Uh, and I think uh, it's about 60 or 70 grams. Okay, it's quite thin. You can kind of just see my hand through it and that's fine. It's nice and smooth. It's going to do what you want it to do. There's lots of stuff mentioned about paper being archival. Uh, really, I think at this stage of what we're playing around with, I wouldn't worry about that. You can get archival copy paper and by that it means the acids have been taken out of it which means it's not going to go brown you know when you pick up a novel which obviously novels are made from cheap paper because they're using such a lot of paper over time that goes brown the acids in the paper have made the, the made the paper go a little bit brown really you know um i'm i'm 64 i don't know how long that'll be before this paper goes brown not in my lifetime and remember we're coating it with paints so I really wouldn't fuss too much about whether these papers are archival or not okay uh, I'll talk a bit more about archival papers when we look at collage paper in another section of monotype and more but this one's about materials and methods so that's your standard copy paper it's nice a lot of people just use this and when I was teaching in colleges and high schools this is what you use this is cheap super cheap and it does what you need it to do Okay, it's particularly good if you're working in layers. It's not so good if you're working on what I call a peel print. Okay, and I'll be explaining what I mean by that at various points during the course. But very simply, it, you build up your layers on your jelly or your gel plate and you let them dry and then you pull the whole lot off. And it's quite a rough you're literally you know, pulling off dry paint from your gel plate. So it needs to be probably a little bit stiffer than this. Uh, you may get away with this, but mm, you'll learn by experimenting. But that's copy paper, okay? I like marker paper, which again, is, it's, it's slightly smoother than copy paper. It is, it's kind of like the, the, the big brother of copy paper. It is called marker paper because it's used by illustrators and it doesn't bleed. Okay, so uh, the colours don't kind of like spread out within it. it. It's just a nice paper to use. So marker paper is great. Okay, you might find you have some marker paper. They're both about the same weight. All right, slightly different. Notice the copy paper is whiter than that. You're going to see that in various papers you use. And a lot of that is also down to recyclability or whether it's been made from recycled papers. Uh, my husband bought some copy paper that was recycled paper. It's lovely, you know, trying to be eco. Uh, I printed off the placement sheets, which you'll see uh, on a section later on. Uh, and it's, it's, the paper's grey, so the placement sheet simply didn't show up at all. It's fine, but it is very grey, okay? So you might want, to, might want to think about that, but this is slightly warmer than this one, okay? Not something to worry about, that's okay. Next up uh, is a nice one I use called Snowden. 
This is 130. This is a nice paper, okay? And again, I'm pretty sure these papers are, are universal. Uh, it's got a nice and smooth. I also use that uh, for intaglio printmaking. And I use a lot, and I mean a lot, of this. This is a sea white, made by sea white, uh, here in the UK, sea white of Brighton. And it's what I tend to call sketchbook paper. Both of these papers are the kind of papers you would find in a sketchbook. It's that kind of weight. This is 140 gram. And it does exactly what I want it to do, all right? So that's their 140 gram one. Interestingly, this is their recycled one. You can see the difference in the tone, all right? The recycled is, is a little grubbier than the other one, all right? They do, they do two types. They make the recycled one, I think, out of paper cups. Uh, and that's the same weight, all right? So that's 130, they're about 140. They're all pretty similar mid-weight papers. Then we go up a little bit more. Um, got that around the wrong order, here we go. Uh, this is uh, one I do like. This is by Fabriano. And I've written on there, it, you can put this in an inkjet paper. Um, I've got two Fabrianos in this pile. Uh, and this is 160. So already we're just moving up a little bit. I like this, okay? This is this for me is becoming, although I do like to see why it's, and it's cheaper. This isn't too expensive and this is becoming a real favorite. Just that little extra weight seems to make a lot of difference. and It has a nice surface to it. That's by Fabriano. Uh, then you've got Bristol. You, uh, and I know Bristol paper is fairly universal. This is the Canson Bristol. I've got two Bristols. This is 180 gram and I bought this on a A4 pad where they rip out, okay? Um, so that's nice. I find Bristol quite white, okay? If you put it against the, the Fabriano, it's quite a chilly white, okay? But it's a nice paper and 140 gram. And going back to what I said about peel prints, these are the kind of weights, okay, that work really well with anything that you're gonna be quite rough with. Then we have an, another Fabriano. That's the same, the same stuff, but that's 200 grams, a little bit heavier. Then we have another one. This is one I use a lot of. So if I'm wanting uh, a heavy paper, if I'm making books, for example, I'm making concertina books, uh, if I'm making cards, you know, birthday cards, Christmas cards, uh, anything that I'm wanting to fold and stand up, uh, I head for the 220 gram sea white. Okay, this is a nice weight. It does what I want it to do. It's still nice and smooth. Hasn't really got a tooth to it. Uh, and it will stand up if you're making concertina books. I'm making books on another one, of course, on this series called Cover to Cover. And I'll be using uh, the Sea White quite a lot of that. There's a Bristol one that I bought from the company Sea White, which is why I've written Sea White in the corner. But this is Bristol and that's a 240, okay? And again, look how white it, it, whiter it, it is than the, uh, the cartridge paper. Okay, this is Bristol paper. You can get Bristol board, by the way, uh, in case anyone's confused. I've no idea why it's called Bristol. Might have to look it up. But you can get Bristol board, which is like a thick card. Uh, and but Bristol is is super smooth. Uh, that that's that's almost shiny smooth. Uh, there's a little bit more tooth here. Okay, but this is super smooth. So if you're wanting a super smooth, then head for your Bristols. All right, they are the papers. Uh, and I think if you're just starting out, uh, obviously I would just I would hang around with some copy paper. And if you're wanting something thicker. Then, then a mid-range paper, okay, 140 gram type paper. If you are going to go on and make things that you want a thicker paper for, like concertina books, etc., etc., then a, a heavier one. But you can you can hang on and around for that one, okay. Uh, and this also this one I collage onto. It's nice to stick things the onto. The last thing I want to do is overwhelm you with papers. Uh, but I was scouting around my studio, I found a few more that you can print on. These papers are the kind of papers that you might not necessarily think of as printmaking papers or papers that you can print on. So I wanted to kind of pull them out. This is Upo, and again I've gone in weight, okay, thick and thin, thick to thin, even though these are translucent, they're still thick. This is Upo, this is 153 gram, this is made by a company called Legion, uh, and Upo is a polyester paper, 
if that's not a contradiction in terms. Uh, and it's designed that you can paint on this and wipe it off, paint on this and wipe it off. And a lot of artists are really enjoying it. I like its translucency. It's very strong. Uh, and you can print on it, okay? Your print will dry on it, it's lovely. It's particularly nice when we come on to doing things like making artist books, if you want layers, all these translucent ones. If you're wanting layers that aren't opaque, that you want to see through slightly, they're really lovely, particularly if you're using translucent inks, or if you're wanting to put text on. Some of these, not all of them uh, will go through a laser printer and you can add text onto it. But that's a whole different course. I've divided these in weight, so I've got two UPOs, but I want to show you the thickness of the Duralar. The Duralar is thinner than that. The Duralar doesn't come as a weight. There's nothing on the packet that says what it weighs, but it's probably around 120 grams, okay? And again, it's nice and translucent. As you will see, I use this for cutting out stencils. I like it because you can put this through a printer because this is heat resistant. The other UPO, uh, is uh, 115 grams, a different make. This is by C. White, uh, and this is opaque, okay? Then we've got old school tracing paper. Lovely stuff, I love tracing paper. Tracing paper comes in different uh, thicknesses. You'd be, be surprised to know, all right? It tends to buckle if you get it wet, but remember we're not using lots of water. We're using thin layers of printing ink, uh, of paint, so it's not going to get super wet. On that note, Akua does not like any of these. Anything that's, that's, that's plasticky, it simply won't absorb into, all right? So these are, you can only use acrylics on these for what we're doing. So uh, tracing paper is great, all right? And I like that nice translucency, that's 90 gram. Tyvek I have used plenty of times and I use that a lot for uh, printing on and I use it for painting on, and I use it for making my stencils, okay? I, I bought a roll of this. It works out much cheaper. You can, get, you can buy it by the roll, uh, and this is 55 gram, and it's super cheap. This uh, does not go through a laser printer unless it says, okay, somewhere that your paper is heat resistant. Don't put it through a laser printer. I know this from experience. Then we've got rice paper, and this is very similar to uh, weight in terms of deli paper, for example, or even the wet strength tissue. But it isn't wet strength. If you, if you get this wet, it just goes into a pulp. But it is lovely to print on. It doesn't matter that it's not wet strength for our purposes. Okay, you can print on this really nicely. It comes with a smooth side and a rough side. Uh, and often it's called a hosho paper or paper for sumi ink. So this is rice paper, it's about 35 grams. And then you've got old school, again, another old school thing, glassine, do you remember this? This is what you'd, you, we used to get in photo albums. Yeah, uh, and it's nice, it prints, it's a bit shiny. Uh, probably uh, my preference would be for tracing paper. It's a bit shiny, but it's very thin and you can print on it, okay? There we go, there are kind of a few more papers. As, I, as I'll say below, and I'll say it again, don't go panicking about what papers you have, but it might help to have a ferret around and see what you already have. So I won't be using this on this course, but I will be using it on other courses. But I wanted to see what it was like, because it's not cheap. And it's the Han, I can never say it, the Hanamul uh, version of Sumi or paper for Japanese ink painting. It's 80 grams, which is about the same kind of weight as a copy paper. And you get um, 20 sheets in a pack. So it's a, yeah, it's expensive. It works out to be about 50p a sheet, okay? Which isn't, which isn't cheap for, for jelly printing. But I wanted to see what it was like, okay? So I bought myself a pack. And it comes in this pack, and initially I thought, oh, okay, that's a bit ordinary. That's, that's a bit of a, just a kind of a white paper, okay? But that's the paper protecting the paper, all right? I couldn't work out what the different value tones were, okay? So you get two pieces of actually rather nice copy paper, okay? So you get two pieces of those protecting uh, this page. This is the, the Sumi paper, okay? Uh, and I've just done a little bit of a wet test on the corner 
to see how strong it is with water. And it's darn strong, guys. It's certainly stronger than your standard rice paper. All right? Uh, whether or not you want to fork out this amount of money for some paper, I'm not, I'm not sure. But it's, it is nice. And the bonus is, whilst you get 20 sheets of these, uh, you're, you're also getting 22 sheets of this, uh, which is quite a nice copy paper. So that's a Hanamul Sumi E, okay, paper for Japanese ink painting, natural white. Uh, and then we've got deli papers or tissues, the fine papers, okay, which are an absolute delight to use because they um, glue down nicely with collage. You can see through them. Uh, they're great for mopping up excess paint on your gel plate and they're cheap, okay? And they seem to go on forever, which is just fabulous. There's two main brands, okay? Uh, this this is the one that I was up until about 10 years ago uh, importing from the States. And this is Cabnet Wax, K-A-B-N-E-T. Uh, and this is probably the thickest one. This is called, this is their heavyweight one. Uh, and it's shiny on one side, uh, matte on the other. Although it makes no difference at all to our printing which side you use. Although there's something to be said for putting it down that way because we have a crease so if you lay it down that way, you can sometimes end up with a white line. I did have a lady on one of my in-person courses who ironed all her deli paper to make sure she got rid of her white line. It is something that you can do. You can see my hand through it, okay? Uh, that gives you an indication of its thickness. I haven't weighed it. The weight doesn't come on this, um, but I'm guessing it's around... 20 grams okay i know that from from buying other tissues with a similar weight to it okay so about 20 25 gram is your cabinet wax and it comes in this size which is great for jelly printing particularly if you're working square i use it a lot i used to import it because you couldn't simply couldn't get it here and when i first started playing with uh, jelly break jelly plate printing some 10 years ago now uh, I was watching videos on YouTube and getting excited by deli paper. Couldn't get it here. Did a mountain of research, uh, pretended I was going to open a deli to all the companies in Europe and got them to send me samples. And they're waxed on the surface. This is, this is kind of waxed inside, which means it has, is receptive to paint. The ones we get over here in Europe, A, they've always got logos and designs all over them, but the, the paint just wipes away. Uh, they're waxed on the surface, they're waxed paper. Anyway, so that's the, the, the cabinet wax. The one we can get here really easily because there's two stores in the UK who've started selling this, uh, is the Logan, which hopefully you can see is thinner. I get both my hands. Only a touch, but a little thinner, okay? So for example, if I said this was probably 25, this is about, this is probably 20, okay? Nice and thin, and less waxy, much less waxy than the cabinet wax. Comes in different sizes. Uh, you can buy a nice long skinny one, which is about the same width. I think it's six inches, it's the same width as your jelly plate, and that's really handy. Uh, or you can buy these big boxes of eight by 10. I apologize, this is 10. 10 inches by 10 and three quarter inches. We can buy that now in the UK from handprinted.co.uk and from Jackson's Art, okay? I'm not sure about where else in Europe you can get this, uh, but this is fabulous. Uh, and you'll see me use this a lot. I just pull the sheet out and, and whack it on my plate and off I go, all right? Really, really like that. That's the Logan. Before, before they started doing Logan, uh, and I was restricted to importing stuff like this, um, I did a mountain of research there, again, trying to find another deli paper. Uh, and on my travels, I found this. Uh, this is wet strength tissue. It's a tissue paper that is acid-free. It's advertised acid-free. It's made by a company uh, in the UK called Carnival. There are probably other companies. If you know of another company that sells wet strength tissue, please let me know so that I can add it to the list. So it's designed to be stretched over withies or canes, okay? To make big structures uh, with something like PVA glue. Okay, it's, it's about the same weight as the 
cabinet wax paper. Uh, it's cheap. You can buy it on Amazon. The more you buy, the cheaper it is. I use it not only for printmaking, I also use it on my etching press to protect my blankets. And then, so therefore, if I get any, any printing ink on it, I can use this for collage later. I've got mountains of it. Whereas previously, I would use something like newsprint. I use it for wrapping up things. I use it for wrapping up birthday presents. It's fabulous. The point is, is it, it can get wet and it doesn't rip or dissolve. There is an American one. I think it's called Spectra Bleeding Tissue. Uh, I had some shipped over and I did a little test between the two. It is stronger than a regular tissue, but not as strong as this, okay? It lasted a little while longer than ordinary tissue that you would buy, you know, for kids to play with, but it wasn't as strong as the wet strength tissue, okay? I would say if you're that side of the pond, head over to your deli papers. Now there are other tissues, uh, and if you head to my website, I have a supplies list. There's Tenchugo, which is a Japanese tissue. Uh, there's a Baka tissue, there's lens tissue, all different weights and all do different things. And they tend to be a little bit more expensive, okay? And lens tissue is, if you're thinking this is 20 grams, then lens tissue or a backer tissue, and I've got a piece here. Okay, this is a backer tissue. This is nine gram, okay? Now I'm not using this on this course. Uh, I do use this on the collage course, uh, but there's links to uh, US, Australia, Canada uh, on my website. Uh, if you're wanting to play around with more expensive, but very nice 